This is the Gold Frog Podcast, and I'm your host, Xavier Garrido. Welcome to the second episode. Today we're going to be focusing on a conspiracy that very few people are tuned into, and it involves Shen Yun and a Chinese cult known as Falun Gong. So what is Shen Yun? For those of you who don't know, Shen Yun is a Chinese cultural play that goes around to many major cities in the United States. Now from the outside it does seem to be a Chinese cultural show and for the most part it really is. It showcases a large variety of Chinese dances and musical performances. I myself saw the play last summer and I thought at first that it was pretty good but towards the end it started to get into some weird cultural things and other things about this religion called Feilun Gong, or as they call it in the play, Feilun Dafa. There are more interchangeable names, really. So towards the end of the play, it started to focus more on the suppression of this religion by the Chinese government. Now this, in hind- at the time, to me, this seemed more like a, a way to connect the Chinese culture in the show and how it, it relates to China in a modern sense. Because from the outside, the show seems to be promoting Chinese culture because it's being, um, it's being bogged down and suppressed in homeland China. However, I think that the inclusion of this specific religion, and not just talking about the mythology and the dance on its own, is more malicious rather than cultural. The main reason that this is weird, or I would say wrong, is because if you were to see say, a play about the nativity, you know what you're getting into. It's not like they label it as a celebration of Middle Eastern culture and dancing, and then at the end they throw in some Jesus stuff. When you see a play like that, you know, hey, this is a religious affair. It's not like when you see the Book of Mormon, you know what you're in for. You're not thinking, oh, this is just your average Broadway play. And that's, what, that's, mainly, that's the main reason why I believe that it's, it's very malicious. Because if you look at the advertising material for this play, there is like nothing about religion in it at all. There's maybe some some blurbs about how the show will introduce the concept of repressed religion. However, it's nothing something huge. So I when I, after I originally saw the show, I didn't necessarily think about all of these things. But recently, I was on an online forum and I saw a post about the show and how it was owned by this company called the uh, New Tang Dynasty Television. I'm going to call that NTD if I have to refer to it in the future because it's a pretty long-winded title. But anyways, it's connected to that. And to me, on the out on to me, that just seems like a pretty average name for maybe a television company that would translate Chinese language movies into English. But it's much more than that. And delving deeper into it, I discovered that both the show Shen Yun and New Tang Dynasty Television are owned by a company called Epoch... Let me see here. Epoch Media Group. And then that is what led me down a rabbit hole and what ultimately led me to feeling like this organization and the religion, Falun Gong, have some ulterior motives. Now, pretty much spelt out in NTD's title, New Tang Dynasty, you can pretty much ascertain what their their goal is. Their the main reason that they exist is because they are they are anti communist China, and they and they are extreme traditionalists. And I'm going to get into this further down the line here. So, looking further into Epoch Media Group, I saw that they also owned this online publication called Epoch. The Epoch Times, which I thought was, it sounds really, really interesting. I think that would be a good name for a metal publication, but it is not. It is a anti-Chinese website, which is made by Chinese expats for Chinese expats. And it is extremely strange to me. I mean, the entire website looks like one of those banner ads that you see. And it has, that has articles that have catchy headlines but you don't really want to click on them because you're afraid you're going to get a virus i don't recommend you go to this website on the off chance 
So I would say don't go to this website unless you're confident in your, your internet surfing skills to not get a virus. So there's a ton of very catchy headlines on the news website. And overall, I get the impression that it fits in with its its main parent company. It's definitely anti-communist Chinese and definitely pro Falun Gong and other spirituality. And it's 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 very... Just looking at the website, it just feels like somebody... It feels like an alien made it. And I, I mean that in the way that it feels like an alien wanted to show his aliens back at home, his fellow aliens back at home, what um, what a, a human news website would look like. It's just very strange. If you were to look at it, you, you'd understand for sure. And I found an interesting section on the website called the Beyond Science section. And they have some really, really comical um, titles here. Like the whole that whole section is is just about pseudoscience and the kind of stuff that maybe a grandmother would accidentally share on Facebook, thinking it was real. So there's an article about um, the title is "Is Death Reversible?" There's an article called "Quantum Mechanics Has Reached Its Limit," says Stanford scientist who offers explanation. You know, there's all these kind of things that, you know, it they don't really they don't really mean anything, but the titles want they bring you in, and I could definitely see some people clicking on these thinking that it's not pseudoscience. It's like a study. It's kind of like The Onion, except it's serious. So as I said earlier, the Chen Yun Show and the Epoch Times website they both are they both are very related to Falun Gong, which is a religion and it originally started as a form of qigong which is like tai chi it's just a it's a daily exercise mantra sort of type a sort of martial art that was invented by the chinese you do it every day and the poses are based on certain like astronomical things or animals stuff like that and the leader of falun gong the founder is li hongji and he ha- he holds some very, very interesting views. So as far as the persecution of the Falun Gong goes in China, there have been many reports of them being sent to re-education camps en masse. There have been many report- reports of um, their organs being harvested while in persecution or relocation camps. And it's overall, it's very, it's very bleak outlook. It, it's... That's the weird thing about this information is that none of it is 100% technically confirmed because it's, for one, it's very hard to get this information from China directly. And the American, as well, the American resources for this, the American citations that I have um, list these numbers as well below the numbers that are given by Falun Gong practitioners who live here in the United States. So overall, it's not really sure whose numbers you can trust, but I'd say that realistic, realistically speaking, the reporters who have supposedly gotten the proof that this these organ these organ harvestings have happened, they they don't have any sort of research to back that up or citations or evidence. So that I would take uh, news I would take news on that with a grain of salt. However, them being sent to re education camps, I think that that is definitely very true because that is not something that is unheard of in China. So from the outside, the group seems very like a very sympathetic cause. You have a large group of these religious practitioners who were shunned in their home country. And so in the early 2000s, Li Hongji, the founder, moved to America to avoid persecution. And he, while in America, he was able to build his build the religious base up from the ground and gain a whole lot of followers, not just Chinese people, Chinese immigrants or anything like that. He also was able to recruit many Americans and overall the overall the religion has been able to gain a lot of traction in the in this decade. So let's get in what what is this religion about? So on the ground level, this religion is about 
Well, well, the central tenets, of course, that 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 would be something to start on. So the central tenets of Falun Gong are truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. So those are very I, those those are very noble, right? Those are very noble ways to live your life. How you know, every, almost every religion is like this. There's not I don't think there's a religion out there that's serious that that has central tenets that 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 are like completely against the grain or anything. Now, of course, in order to be talking about it, I have to have some sort of reason to talk about it. And my reason to talk about this is that there is from the outside and anytime you see any sort of news release on these even if you look on this the basic wikipedia article for this for the for Falun Gong it is it does not delve into some of the things that have been said by the founder at talks for fellow Falun Gong practitioners it it's just it's it's very insulting that some of the stuff that has been said has not been is not even like on the wikipedia article it's not common knowledge I feel like it's something that would be very relevant because it would avoid people trying to join this religion and finding out about it and being incredibly sad or it, it would it, I feel like it, it's better for the public to know about this rather than rather than them be in the dark about it. But that that might be obvious anyways. So let's get into a list of the 10 greatest evils as according to Falun Gong. So the first one is hostility then we have abandonment of traditions and the third one is homosexuality the fourth one is gambling and drug abuse the fifth one is sex liberation the sixth one is gang influence on the ruling body the seventh is democracy because it apparently goes against the will of heaven the eighth is science because it leads to mutation the ninth is violence and the last one is the influence of of money and politics on religion. So this list to me is just very strange because you have stuff in here like hostility and let's see what else do we have in here? Hostility and violence and corruption. There's corrupt corruption is kind of on here twice. That's the influence of money and politics on religion and gang influence on the ruling body. So we have we have some relatively reasonable claims to be the 10 greatest evil in the world but then mixed in with that you have things that are extremely wrong and subjective to begin with like you have on the same list as violence you have democracy and science and homosexuality and sexual liberation and gambling it's the list is all over the place it's it's very strange I think the main reason that I find this list to be so abhorrent is because there's not really anything in this list for anybody to be like, you know, it's just there's not, I can't imagine a person, I can't imagine very many people, no, nobody that I even know personally that would feel like this list is like 100% appropriate. So it's just, it's just very strange. Like even the most like backwards hillbilly would like would like sh- would be like a little bit shocked that like democracy would appear on this list like that's such a strange just such a strange thing to me so if you thought that the bad points of this quote unquote religion would end there uh, i will then proceed to talk about some things that li hongji himself has said so even if there there's almost there's no real way you can say that hey this is just something he said in his personal time it's not because it that that's like if the Pope said said these things, you wouldn't say that it's completely unrelated to Catholicism. You would say the the leader of Catholicism said this. this there's something wrong with that. So I will provide more detailed citations in the description of this podcast because uh, I don't really want to read verbatim from my sources because that would be pretty boring. But yeah, I, I will definitely re- prepare citations for these and links that you can read them for yourself just to make sure that I'm not lying about this stuff. So according to Li Hongji, um, let's see what I have my notes here. According to Li Hongji, mixed race people should always be the outcasts of every human society because they are the most mixed up people in the world. And he also has said that interracial children cannot go to heaven and that 
they can only go to heaven with his own personal intervention. And I, so continuing on here, the reason for this is because according to him, heaven is segregated. So there's a heaven where Chinese people go and there's a heaven where Americans go and there's a heaven where Spanish people go. And I'm not just saying American and Spanish and Chinese because that's that's how I interpreted it. That's just how he says it. He says American and Chinese rather than, you know, uh, Chinese and say British or something. He says American and Chinese. So apparently God will distinguish between your nation of origin um, when you go to heaven. But <laughs> moving along here, he also believes in, he denounces medicine because that is related to science. And he would prefer that his followers don't seek care from a doctor and that they would he would rather them seek solace in in prayer and in the hopes that God would judge them worthy enough to survive. So that is a very interesting take on that. So as you can see, this religion holds some very some very backwards, I would say, is, is fair to say, uh, views on the world and how even something as basic to the original religion as afterlife would function. But the religion also holds some very, very, very interesting things related to how reality itself is constructed. So in an interview between Time Magazine and Li Hongji, he goes into this in further detail. And in the interview, he talks about reasons why he thinks that humans are... He talks about the reason why chaos reigns the world now and why humans are bad. And also, how aliens will eventually replace humans. So, let, let's just get into here a little bit. So, I'm just going to read a little bit of the quotes from the article, or the interview. So, Time Magazine. Where did they come from? This is referring to the aliens. Li Hongji. The aliens come from other planets. The names that are used for these planets are different. Some are from dimensions that human beings have not yet discovered. The key is how they have corrupted mankind. Alright, so that's that's the gist of that. And then he says that aliens have given humans modern machinery like computers and airplanes. Now that that's something that's, you know, in a conspiracy sort of mindset that that's definitely possible, I guess you could say. And then... He goes on to say that the ultimate purpose, this isn't a direct quote, but the ultimate purpose for the ultimate reason that aliens gave humans this technology is so that they can replace humans. He basically, he thinks that if we, the reason that they give us these seeds of technology is that so that eventually we can design a way to clone humans. And then according to him, the aliens can replace humans. So in his in his religious theory i guess you could say whenever somebody dies their soul leaves their body and in the same in a similar fashion if somebody were to reproduce a human being then the gods of heaven would not give that body a human soul so then that would give the aliens a sort of place to possess and inhabit which is sort of related to scientology in a way so i think that that's very that's that's it's kind of strange because that that kind of leaves some some unanswered questions there. So if the goal of the aliens was to clone humans or was to find a way to enter the world and aliens gave us this modern machinery, then why didn't they just make human clones to begin with? I mean, if they're capable of teaching us about computers and airplanes, why wouldn't they just skip ahead and just do the cloning themselves? I I don't know. The, the maybe maybe the aliens are really stupid or maybe Li Hongji hasn't really thought about this this that much. So yeah. So also Li Hongji feels that he is above human or that he's not completely human. So Time magazine asked him if he was a human being and he replies, "You can think of me as a human being." And the Time Time magazine asked him if he's from Earth and then he says, "I don't wish to talk about myself at a higher level. People wouldn't understand it." So I guess, this, see, this is really conflicting, right? Because if you're not from Earth, what are you? You're an alien. Li Hongji, he says he's not from Earth. He's not really a human being. I don't know if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, talks like a duck. It's 
It's a duck. So I would say that it's fair to say that according to Lee Hongji himself, he's an alien. And maybe this is a bit unfair. Maybe I'm just quoting him out of context, but somebody somebody should look into this. If you're if you're a Fei Lung Gong practitioner, you should probably examine some of this stuff. So in the grand scheme of things, I can't really find anything that would completely condemn Fei Lung Gong as a 100% guaranteed it's a cult kind of thing. I mean, usually you have some sort of evidence of exploitation. For example, with Scientology, they con their members out of huge sums of money in order to progress within the church. But ultimately, ultimately, sorry, I have reason to believe that Fei Lung Gong sort of wishes to rope in mainly, mainly Chinese nationals who feel distrust of the communist Chinese government. I, I feel like they, they rope them in and then have them work for them. And the many, there's a, there's at least one way that I am very com- confident in saying that they, they, they accomplish this, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's, if it's just the, the whole reason for the Epoch Media Group to exist is to promote this idea that they can, that Chinese nationals who are not, no, who no longer live in China can sort of band together and form a revolution and take back China. So the, the main place that I see that would make sense for them to extend their reach is to recruit dancers for Shen Yun. The reason I think this is because if you look at the Shen Yun website, all of the dancers, all of the musicians and conductors, basically anybody you see in the show, they have they have little bios on the website. And some of them, not all of them have this, but some of them have like little interview questions. Like it's like, what is your favorite meal? And they'll have a response. And so I looked into some of these and I think that those are pretty, there's some really strange responses here. I wouldn't really call them comic. Some of them are more sad than they are comical. If you look at it through the lens of this Feng Lung Gong being a cult, a lot of these re- these responses are very, very distressing. So I'll just read some of the, some of the ones that stood out to me. So the question is, most prized possession lost? And the person replies, I don't lose things. If granted one wish, I would be. They reply, I don't think about unrealistic things. And then this is one of the more strange ones. Favorite character to portray on stage? Their response, a Fei Lun Dafa practitioner. What, was, what has Shen Yun added to your life? Their response, through Shen Yun, I was introduced to Fei Lun Dafa and self-cultivation. If granted one wish, it would be... Response, to stay in Shen Yun forever and fulfill my tasks. Now this, this response, this response question in particular was one that maybe gave me, gave me a seedling of, of an idea that these dancers are doing it specifically for their religion. And I can definitely, I can almost, for, I can, this is another one of those for sure sort of things that I can say that all of these dancers are affiliated with Fei Lung Gong almost without a doubt because if you look at their bios every single every single one of the dancers has graduated from the Fei Tian Academy and before I get into the Fei Tian Academy I would say that the reason why this piece of evidence is relevant it might make sense it would make sense if all of them did graduate from basically the same school because a lot of the dances that they do are very obscure and I don't really think that there's anywhere else you can go to learn these dances, but I think that that would only that will only serve to highlight this information in a way, because I think it's very I think it would be very sad, because a lot of these dances are very beautiful and the stories are very beautiful, and I think it's very sad that the only way for this to cultivate and continue into the future was would be for it to be a part of a cult. So, anyways. As I further looked into the Fei Tian Academy, its full name is the Fei Tian Academy of Arts, and I'm going to read you their mission statement from their website. So, just go right into it. The Fei Tian Academy of Arts is a place where moral values are integrated into the artistic and academic curriculum. It aims to educate the whole person by placing equal emphasis on professional skills, knowledge, cultural study, and character development. 
Phaeton strives to provide an uplifting environment of learning and self-improvement for its students and staff alike, based on truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance, the guiding principles of Phaeton Dafa. If you have a good memory recall, you'll re- you'll rec- you would have recognized those three words because those are the first those are the three words that I quoted in the beginning of this podcast as being the guiding principles of Phaeton Dafa. So that shouldn't. That should not shock you at all to figure out that this college is related to Falun Dafa in some way. And whether or not you can say that maybe they're just pulling inspiration from Falun Dafa, but I don't, I think that that, I th- to me, I think it'd be more likely for them to be in some way funded by the Epoch Media Group in some way or some other subsidiary or something like that because it's just, it's, it lines up way too good for it to not be. And normally that, that kind of thinking can get you into trouble, thinking about when you start brewing conspiracy theories, but it just lines up too well. I mean, it's too much of a coincidence for all of these dancers to have gone to the same dance school and for some reason that dance school be related to Falun Dafa and then that same dance school not be related to the Epoch Media Group, which owns Shen Yun itself so so yeah that's that's basically my case for that so overall I believe I've provided a sub- sufficient amount of evidence I guess you could say for Shen Yun being malicious and Fei Lun Gong being malicious and trying to spread its agenda I I can comfortably say that Shen Yun is definitely propaganda I think that that's really important to get out there because I feel like a lot of impressionable young people can see this show and get caught up in Falun Gong. Like, it's it's very real, and I, I think scary possibility, especially when you consider e- even disregarding their backwards views. It's just, the thought of that is just very chilling to me. And of course... Uh, that's the main goal of this podcast. Like I said, it's I want to share information to people um, about things that they haven't heard of, and I think that this is something that a lot of people have definitely never heard of, or if you have, you've only heard of Shen Yun itself and never heard of any of the other things that they're related to. So overall, I hope that I, I achieved that goal in this episode, and I have the writing up on the wall for everybody, and I hope that we can see that and maybe we can spread this around to relevant people. So I would recommend next time Shen Yun comes into town, don't see the show. So that was our episode on Shen Yun and Fei Lun Gong. If you have any questions or suggestions for me in the future, you can email me at goldfrogpodcast at gmail.com. I will have a link of that in the description of this podcast, no matter where you're listening from. And I would like to also announce that Pretty soon here, I'm going to be starting a Gold Frog podcast Instagram account where I can just post things so that it doesn't have to bog down my personal account and stuff like that. Uh, and also, it would be a nice place for me to post some post things and then have a discussion in the comments with my listeners. That I think that that would be a good idea. And also, let me know how you feel about this episode's length, if you feel it's too long, too short, whatever. I hope you had a good time listening, and I'll catch you on the flip side.